Jose Canseco is an insane person. At this point, you probably know who Jose Canseco is, and even with that, there's still probably a few things in this video you may not know he's said, done, or hunted. Yeah, that's not a joke. He had an offer for a while where you could pay him the low, low price of $5,000 cash to hunt Bigfoot and aliens with him. If you don't know him, that's just one of the crazy stories we're going to cover in this video. And we're also going to cover the fact that in his prime, he was a monster at baseball. I mean, it's pretty obvious why he was a monster, but we'll get into all that. But above all else, he's lived a life no one has ever even come close to replicating, even with this guy having a literal twin brother. I mean, love him or hate him, you gotta give him that at least. So, what makes Jose Canseco such a one-of-a-kind player? Welcome to Stark Raving Sports, my name is SRS Fico, and as always, if you like this video, please consider subbing to the channel. Under 20% of you who watch our blah 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 stats, you know, whatever, but without further ado, Jose Canseco. Canseco had a pretty rough start to his career. Oh yeah, underneath this guy's wild antics for the past 30 years, he was a baseball player first, so why don't we start there? He was a janitor. I said janitor, but I meant to say junior. I don't... I don't know why I said janitor. On JV at one point, who just so happened to, in the nick of time, turn it around and get drafted by the Oakland A's in 1982. Canseco was known in the minors for his impressive home run power, something that clearly wasn't there a couple years ago, or else he wouldn't have been rotting away on his school's JV baseball team. So what changed? Well, what changed is, in 1984, Jose Canseco started taking steroids. And the reason why he did this was because he promised his dying mother that he'd become the best baseball player in the world no matter what it took. Steroids definitely helped with that. His play improved tremendously and he made his major league debut late in the 1985 season. And that's where he claimed he first introduced steroids to the MLB. The manager of the A's said that Canseco walked around with no attempt to hide his steroid use at first and believed everyone else working out normally on the team was just wasting their time. With that kind of attitude, he had to prove that he was any good. And he did. He hit 33 home runs in 157 in his rookie 1986 season and won Rookie of the Year that year. In his 1988 season, he hit 42 home runs and won the AL MVP award, becoming the very first player to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases in a single season. In 1988, he may very well have followed through his promise to his mother. And in 1989, he became a World Series champion with the A's. For them tonight. It's a ground ball to the right side, steered by Phillips. Flips to Eckersley. Yes. No one would care about Canseco if his image didn't start with him being a monster at baseball. And we wouldn't be here today doing this very video if that never happened. But I mean, he was still a steroid demon. He's credited with being one of, if not the first MLB player to be juicing up day in and day out. He was once quoted saying, I'm just trying to take enough gear to make my arms look like SpongeBob's fake blow up biceps. Okay, he didn't actually say that obviously, but you get the point. His brother in arms, literally, was his teammate Mark McGuire, and together they formed the duo known as the Bash Brothers. These guys were absolute menaces when it came to hitting home runs. In fact, if you look really closely and squint hard enough, you can sometimes see the ball screaming for help once it sees who's at the plate. As I mentioned earlier, Canseco got the Rookie of the Year award in 1986, and McGuire got that same award the very next season. Not only were they good, but they even made their own cute little handshake. I mean, it wasn't much of a handshake, it was more just a way to show off their massive roided up arms. And with the two roided up Bash Brothers leading the way, the A's were a powerhouse in the late 80s and early 90s. But after all that, the next few seasons were a little rocky for Canseco. Between injuries and a pretty bad outfield performance, you've probably seen this very famous clip, I'll put it on screen. To the track, look it up! It is off his head, it looked like! And over the top! He just wasn't performing nearly as well as all his previous seasons. He could still hit, when he got the chance to, that is. His first trade in the MLB was to the Texas Rangers in the middle of a game while he was in the on-deck circle. Thinking, it's not April Fool's Day, so I mean this would be a very bad joke. And uh, you know, Tony hugged me in the uh, runway there, and uh, and he told me I should speak with Sandy, and I went up and spoke with Sandy. With the Rangers, then Boston, and then the A's again, he was still doing pretty good. Even when he signed a deal with the Blue Jays, he still had a 46-run season. Canseco 
sends a bomb to left field. You may not have known that, but yeah, he had a 46 home run season for the Blue Jays. And he was even an all-star for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. And he also won another World Series in 2000 with the Yankees. By the time he washed out in spring training with the Montreal Expos in 2002, he was just collecting weird teams for immaculate grid you could never have imagined him on in his prime. And still, even to this day, Canseco is very open about his steroid use. In fact, he wrote a whole book about it, because he was broke. He wrote the infamous book Juiced. And see, the interesting thing about this book, though, is that he wasn't just open about his own use of steroids. He was also very open about a lot of other players' use. In this book, he tells many crazy stories and calls out a lot of players for also juicing it up. And this book caught the eyes of many baseball fans, and some of them happened to be in Congress. Congress ended up calling in Canseco with many other players he called out in his book, such as Mark McGuire, of course. I'm not here to talk about the past. Rafael Palmero and our good old buddy, Sammy Sosa. I made a video on that guy before, haha, <laughs> you should check it out, thanks. The point of this hearing was to question players on their use of PEDs and put pressure on the MLB to tighten their fairly lax enforcement of rules and fairly lax testing for steroids. From being the guy who basically got the league hooked on roids to being the guy snitching on everyone for doing roids, Jose Canseco is definitely an interesting fella. And just like that, the steroids era of baseball was over. Not a single MLB player took steroids ever again. Now what should I do after I stirred up that much of a shit storm? Well, write a sequel to the book Juiced. Of course. The more people got caught and steroids became a much bigger no-no in baseball, the less the game wanted anything to do with Canseco. His achievements were tarnished and labeled as cheating. He's effectively not welcome in any baseball circles, let alone the Hall of Fame. It's hard being the guy who introduced steroids to baseball, torched the record books with them, put everyone else onto steroids, then make a tell-all book about who was using them. It's a very strange look for a guy full of strange looks. If you want to know why he's essentially been excommunicated from baseball, that's why. 462 career home runs, which is top 40 of all time in the history of baseball, were put completely to waste. Being called the godfather of steroids is not a very good label to put it lightly, but what surrounds him in baseball and in life is everything else. Let's play a little game real quick. I'm gonna give you three options, and all you have to do is decide which one is something Canseco has actually done and which two are fake. Ready? Number one. Canseco got into a high-speed police chase which led officers down the highway at 120 miles per hour. Number two, Canseco's pet tortoise Rafael escaped and got into a police chase of his own. Or number three, Canseco injected steroids directly into Mark McGuire's bum bum. I'll give you a second to think about it. Got your answer yet? Well, I lied to you because all three of these things happened. He did lead the cops on a police chase at 120 miles an hour between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. His pet tortoise Raphael did escape and it's unconfirmed the speeds this police chase reached. And yes, he did poke Mark McGuire in the booty with a needle full of his sweet, sweet get big juice. Tell me about your first hand experiences with McGuire. Just the first time injecting him in his buttocks. <laughs> I want to talk for a bit about just how wacky and wild of a life this guy's lived. That police chase I was talking about happened in 1989, and that was the same year he was also arrested for having a loaded gun in his car on a college campus. Canseco had always been a paranoid person, and when you mix that with the fact that he said someone had recently threatened him and his wife, that's probably the reason he had a gun on him. He was released on a $2,500 bail for the incident, as having a loaded firearm on a college campus is a felony, and something that you probably just shouldn't do. Speaking of getting arrested, because that's happened a lot to him, in 2001, him and his twin brother, yes, the same one I mentioned earlier, were arrested, charged with aggravated assault, and sued for getting in a fight in a Miami nightclub while they were dressed as vampires. It was Halloween, that's why they were dressed as vampires. I guess it's kind of fitting, seeing as how when his steroid supply ran out, he could probably just suck the blood of one of his teammates so he doesn't miss a dose. Anyways, bad jokes aside, they beat these guys up pretty bad, breaking one of the guy's noses, which needed reconstructive surgery, and splitting the other guy's lips so bad he needed 17 stitches. In total, the guys they beat up were awarded $738,908 for damages and medical bills. And on top of that, the Canseco brothers never apologized. They refused. Here's another fun little aside. There's a lot of weird situations.
operations when it comes to Jose Canseco and animals. Not only did his tortoise escape like I mentioned earlier, but he also posted on social media that he gave his tortoise's shell a new paint job, which if you didn't know can actually kill him. Then there was another situation where he was pulled over for having diaper wearing goats in the back of his car while driving to somewhere I guess. He must have been upset that he wasn't the goat so he just bought some instead. If you want to lump aliens in with animals, he's also publicly claimed that we've been in contact with aliens before and they've been trying to teach us how to time travel, so there's that too. <laughs> Moving right along, there's also a time where he blew off one of his fingers cleaning one of his guns at home. By this point, I don't even know how he's legally allowed to own a gun, but you know. Or what about the times where he would actually send his twin brother to do meet and greets and autograph signings for him like it's an episode of Zack and Cody. I know I'm throwing a lot at you at once, but I also just want to mention his Twitter in general. Maybe he's doing a bit, but I'm pretty sure this guy is just actually insane. He seems to have a thing for vampires, I guess, like this tweet where he says, if I were a vampire, I could play independent baseball forever, and this one where he says, I think I'm part tortoise, part gorilla, and vampire because I can't run, but I am very strong and my bat speed is the same as 30 years ago. And it's not just vampires. He also talks about very sane things such as aliens, time travel, and complaining about his head hurting because he spent the whole day learning telekinesis. I can make an entire video just reading through his tweets and laughing. If you want to have a good time, look through his Twitter. He also has a habit of addressing his own daughter as poop on Twitter, as well as just tweeting the word poop a lot. Also, he very publicly hates A-Rod. In the midst of all this weird stuff though, Canseco never really gave up on his baseball career. He tried many times to get back into the league, but every time he either was banned, like even from the Mexican league, cause you know, he does a lot of steroids, or the MLB just flat out didn't want anything to do with him cause of his history of steroid use. He even tried to be a coach a few times, but that also didn't work out. In 2010, he basically got on his metaphorical hands and knees and begged the New York Mets to invite him to spring training, and even Business Insider reported on it. He played independent league baseball all the way into 2006, but even if he stayed ridiculously jacked, he was just nowhere near the hearts and minds of the world doing publicity stunts and trying to cling on to the dream in small town unaffiliated baseball. You don't really move the publicity needle when you win indie baseball home run derbies or player managed teams no one knows in Yuma, or getting ejected from games when you're a 47 year old playing in Massachusetts for arguing with umpires and then later suing the team and claiming they owe you money. So what do you do if you're a washed up celebrity? Well, boxing, of course. Jose Canseco might have been one of the first influencer turned boxer stories ever. I mean, probably not, but it's a lot funnier if he was. Canseco first dove into the boxing world in 2008 when, to an astounding amount of booze, He stepped into the ring to fight former NFL player Vi Sikahema and got knocked out. He also tried out MMA for a bit and in his first fight he went up against Hongmen Choi. If you don't know who that is, he's a 7 foot 2, 350 pound professional kickboxer. Like dude, no way in a million years I'm gonna fight a 7 foot 2, 350 pound kickboxer. Jose Canseco has always been crazy, but I didn't know he was that crazy. Surprise, surprise, Canseco lost. Who would have thought? In one of his more recent fights, he fought Billy Football from Barstool Sports. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. Like, what is going on? And even in this completely different sport that he's just dabbling in, he still somehow finds himself surrounded by controversy. Do yourself a favor and watch this promotional appearance on part of my take before the fight, but like... You speak English. What, what does easily mean? Do you speak English? Si, hablo inglés. No, you don't bien. speak English or Spanish properly. So, so All you really need to know is that he was so confident in his ability to win against Billy Football that he tried to set a bet with the hosts for 500k that he'd beat him easily. He lost. <laughs> the fight was over in like 20 seconds and people have speculated that he took a dive on purpose because he just wanted the fight to be over quickly so he could just get his money and run. He hasn't been in the best financial state since the 90s and early 2000s so I'm inclined to believe this speculations personally. In 2003 he was on house arrest. His plan to raise some money? Auction off a day with him. Again while on house arrest. Now, if that ain't a real entrepreneur right there. Then he actually full-on went into entrepreneurship later on by opening a car wash in Las Vegas, 
which he's now selling. And just like the thing I mentioned about him sending his twin to do autograph signings, he also had his twin do a charity boxing match for him once. They found out about it, and he got sued. Again. This guy just loves getting sued, apparently. I saved these last ones for the ends because these last two situations are a little more dark and kind of point out the fact that Jose Canseco is not really someone you should be looking up to. At the crisp hour of 4.30 a.m. at an intersection, Canseco got into a verbal altercation with his wife, Esther, which apparently led him to stealing her purse and refusing to give it back. He did eventually give his wife her purse back, and when she drove off, he chased her in his own car and rammed her twice, eventually running her off the road. He says steroids aren't the reason for his violent behavior, and yes, just because you're on a substance, that doesn't mean you're free from blame, but like, it's a proven thing that steroids can make you more violent. The situation with his second wife is even darker. In the back of a friend's car in Miami, he got into an argument with his second wife, Jessica, that escalated to the point where he, quote, grabbed her by the hair to get her attention, and he also hit her in her left eye. He would eventually get charged for this and was court ordered to stay away from her and his one-year-old daughter. Fuck you. Jose Canseco. Jose Canseco in his day was a good baseball player. When he wasn't in some sort of controversy for five minutes, pumping himself full of enough steroids to make an elephant explode, I mean, there was only one year he didn't do that, but I mean, his talent was undeniable. But at the end of the day, talent shouldn't mean you can get away with doing horrible things. He's not someone you should really look up to, especially for his off the field escapades. He's a pretty bad person. I just wanted to make this video to show that he's had one of the most interesting and wacky lives of any MLB player to ever live. This isn't glorifying him, you shouldn't feel sorry for him, but a baseball fan should understand why he's been excommunicated from the game and a non-baseball fan who just sees him as a confusing guy who can't stay out of weird trouble should understand how we got here. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, I'm SRS FICO. If you like this video, you can follow me on Twitter and eventually I'm going to start making my own content on my own channel again. But. Anyways, have a lovely day, gamers. Peace.